Hi, this is the Tuesday evening update on Hurricane Delta. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and information from your local authorities and local weather office for the best information for where you are. We've had a lot change in the last 24 hours, not all of it unexpected, but still unfortunate here as Delta has intensified rapidly into a major hurricane as it continues to barrel toward Mexico in the Northeast Yucatan Peninsula. This is the recon data from the plane that was in there a few hours ago, which has since left, uh, found the pressure falling down into the mid 950s and uh, a small but ferocious wind field here in purples uh, shows you how small and compact the core of the storm is, but winds in here have gotten up to an estimated 145 miles per hour, making Delta a Category 4 hurricane. And this has happened in a hurry, and of course is uh, bad news for the coast of Mexico, where landfall is expected sometime overnight tonight. Now, if we take a closer look at what the structure of Delta has been. This is a somewhat low quality, but best uh, look that we can get from the Cayman radar site from a few hours ago. This would have been just before 3 p.m. Eastern time uh, when uh, on, the, on October 6th. And this shows the hurricane here from the Cayman radar and a very tiny eye present. Now Recon measured this as small as four miles across. This qualifies as what we like to call a pinhole eye, just to illustrate that it is very tiny. This does a few things. One is that it makes it very easy for the wind to spin up quickly, which is why we've gotten this to category four so quickly. But it's also kind of a fragile structure because the vortex is so small. And what tends to happen as soon as we get the eye to this kind of tiny size, there's usually another band that tries to wrap around and form a second outer ring of thunderstorms that can become a second eye wall. And then we can undergo what's called an eye wall replacement cycle, where the inner eye gradually disintegrates while a larger, larger outer eye contracts and becomes the new eye at a larger size than before. And we are seeing some signs that this might be starting to happen now. If we look at a microwave pass from around the same time as the radar image, it shows that the inner eye, which doesn't show up well because it's so small here, was starting to get surrounded at least 50% around by this larger band uh, to the outside of it. And it's not all the way around, but it's starting to show the kind of structure that could lead to a second eye wall and that eye wall replacement cycle. And if we look at the close visible shot of the storm, we can see further possible evidence of this right at the end of the loop. I might be able to stop this here and just show you uh, the textured cloud tops here are illustrating a partial ring that is a little larger than the eye we were seeing earlier in the day. So you might be able to make out that divot there. This could be the new eye uh, trying to form at a larger size. Now, despite being so strong, Delta has not had a cleared out eye all day. So the classical satellite picture has not yet appeared. We've had this cloud filled. And this is an illustration of the fact that the core has been a little bit asymmetric. If we look at this radar picture again, we'll see that the north side kind of had a dearth of thunderstorms. The south side, very fat, lots of thunderstorms, but the, the south eyewall has been the strongest all day. The north eyewall sometimes open, and if there's been anything that has limited Delta in any way, it has been this structure. Uh, a little crazy to say, Delta has certainly not looked like a storm that is limited, but if anything has, it has been the fact that it is not a perfect donut. We'll see if that changes later tonight. There is still a little bit of mid-level shear here which induced this asymmetry. Some of this mid-level wind out of the east is just a little too strong and there is a little bit of shear here. Uh, so for the moment this afternoon, it looks like since the last recon plane went in, we may have seen a little bit of a leveling off in Delta's intensity at Cat 4 and may not be intensifying all that much at this precise hour. That may change if we get a larger eye that forms and starts to clear out, and there is still some remaining hours before this gets to the Mexican coastline, and we may see some further increases in intensity. That said, this is already uh, pretty strong, and uh, this is going to be a major event regardless of the exact maximum wind speed at the time of landfall, and this is something that interests here should be taken very seriously. This is the last of your daylight hours to prepare in areas near Cozumel, Cancun, along the northeast Yucatan coastline. As far as the exact track at landfall here, the long-term motion during the day has been aiming this basically at Cozumel, but if we zoom back out to the larger view, we do have the remnants of gamma here, 
And this is starting the process where these two are going to start orbiting around each other a little bit. And this may bump uh, Delta's track just a hair to the north in the final hours. And so it's possible that it passes north of Cozumel closer to Cancun here on the northeastern tip of the Yucatan. But that's basically the zone where we're expecting landfall between Cozumel and the Yucatan or and Cancun on the northeastern tip is basically where this is uh, probably going to come in tonight uh, during the dark hours. So do be prepared and everyone stay safe there. As we talk about the remaining part of Delta's journey, after it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula, which it will do fairly quickly overnight tonight and tomorrow morning, it will get out into the Gulf of Mexico. And at that point, it will become a threat to the United States. And we can take a look at uh, the factors governing that evolution. And again, this is mostly ocean related, where we're gonna be watching closely the fact that it's going to be moving out of this deep warm water and then probably over the land mass, which will likely weaken it temporarily. We might see it bumped down a bit. And then it's gonna come back out over this part of the Gulf. And once it gets out, at least to past the continental shelf to a position out here, the water gets pretty warm and deep again, deep enough that it could support Delta regaining something like category four intensity out over the middle of the Gulf. And we'll see if there's other eyewall replacement cycles and such internal variability that can move the intensity up and down, but this is likely to be a major hurricane of at least Cat 3 strength over the central Gulf. And we've seen the track continue to edge a little bit toward the west today. And we talked yesterday about how this is important because the farther left it comes, the longer it stays over this zone of warm water right in here. And this track now may keep it over this uh, patch of warmer, deeper water for a longer time before finally moving up into what is currently expected to be Louisiana. And therefore, the time over the cool water prior to landfall is less than it would have been if the storm had come up with a track, say, this way, where there's much, uh, much greater expanse of cool water for it to pass over. So unfortunately, the trend in the track right now is favoring something that prevents Delta from weakening uh, significantly before landfall. It will likely be weakening due to a combination of the cool shelf water and wind shear increasing, but it's unlikely to weaken uh, significantly and will likely be a major storm at landfall. This is the H wharf showing that progression just so, so everyone can see what's going on. We've got the storm currently over the very warm sea surface temperature of the Western Caribbean, cold patch of water north of the Yucatan. So we'll pass over the land mass and or that cool patch weaken a bit and then move back out over this expanse of warm water in the Western Gulf. And then eventually near the coast, this drops off into cooler water. And so it might reach another peak in intensity about here. And then as it moves up toward Louisiana, we will likely see some weakening as it starts to upwell some cooler water and move over the cooler shelf. And again, during this time, wind shear is also likely to increase. We can see on the GFS, southwesterly flow in the upper troposphere will be also shearing the hurricane. So both of these factors likely to lead to a weakening hurricane, but it is important that people People do not focus on this fact. Uh, this is likely to be a very powerful hurricane, even though it's weakening at landfall. It might be a four here, and it might be a three here. And a three is still a huge deal, especially in terms of storm surge for a very flood-prone area in the central Gulf Coast. And unfortunately, areas similar to that hit by Hurricane Laura may be facing storm surge again in this case. If we look at the GFS steering forecast for this, again, we've mentioned that the forecast has been trending a little bit to the left, and that has kind of continued today. And this is the 48-hour uh, trend in the 500 millibar height. And what this shows you is that in red, the GFS ensemble has been predicting a little bit of a stronger ridge over the southeastern U.S. than it was a day or two ago. And this is helping to push Delta's track a little bit farther to the west and on the model now is targeting western central Louisiana on more and more of these runs. And uh, the question remains, what is the window of uncertainty here? How far west or how far east could the landfall be? Uh, in terms of how far east it could be, we are reducing the risk of a direct landfall to Alabama and western Florida because a lot of the guidance has now really latched on to Louisiana being the target here after the track shifts to the left yesterday and today. 
Uh, that doesn't mean there might not still be impacts, especially if the storm is turning toward the right here at landfall. A storm moving inland over eastern Louisiana or southern Mississippi would still bring strong storm surge as it pushes water on the eastern side into Alabama and western Florida. So it's important to realize there still may be impacts even post landfall that far east, but a direct hit seeming less and less likely now for Alabama and western Florida. And even for eastern Louisiana, odds are seemingly decreasing for a direct hit, although we cannot rule that out at this time. If this does start deviating to the right earlier, we could get it moving into the Mississippi Delta. In terms of how west this could go, again, we do have a trough over Texas, and so getting this to come right up into, say, the central Texas coast, not going to happen here. Getting it west of Houston in general, highly, highly unlikely here. But what could still happen is a track that gets uncomfortably close to the state border, close enough to bring impacts to eastern Texas and the Houston-Galveston area on the western side of the storm. And just to illustrate this, the farthest left model we have today is the European model, which has the storm here on Friday morning and then moves right up into Lake Charles uh, early on Saturday morning. So this is a track just to the right of the state border, similar to Laura's landfall and something that could bring impacts to extreme eastern Texas and uh, all of western Louisiana. And that's probably outlining the left-hand side of expectation here. And uh, if it were to get significantly farther left than that, that seems seems unlikely at this point. If we look at the official forecast from the NHC, this is the current forecast cone showing this again, maximum winds 145 miles per hour at the moment, expected landfall near or north of Cozumel, near or south of Cancun overnight tonight, and then emerging still as a major hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico and making that turn, this track has come left along with the computer modeling and uh, showing that turn toward the northeast with the cone of uncertainty bracketing from Galveston Bay to the Mississippi Delta. And a lot of modeling is really zeroing in on perhaps the Lake Charles to Morgan City, Louisiana area as the most likely zone of coastline to get the landfall right now. And as we get closer and closer to that time, expected to be Friday evening, we will be able to pin, pin down that landfall location further and further. For now, there's still some uncertainty as to which part of Louisiana, and again, still a brush with eastern Texas is, is possible here. So be on your toes in extreme eastern Texas, and all of Louisiana should definitely be preparing for a serious event. Keep in mind that even if the storm is weakening, if it reaches a strong intensity here, it's also likely to be an enlarging hurricane, likely to get larger due to a combination of Iowa replacement cycles, interaction with the trough over Texas, all of these things will make the wind field broader, and this pushes more ocean water. And even if the maximum winds are decreasing as the storm moves northward, the fact that it built up a bunch of ocean water here means that that's going to get pushed on shore even if the winds die off a little bit prior to landfall. So the storm surge especially is going to be a significant hazard here that folks along the central Gulf Coast will have to take seriously and possibly well to the east where storm surge can easily occur well to the east of a hurricane landfall, even if you're outside the maximum wind area. So do keep that in mind. For now, no watches and warnings up here. There's still time to prepare. We'll likely get watches and warnings in a day or so, uh, but uh, be on your toes here. Again, a little bit of uncertainty and wiggle room in the track, but Louisiana most likely to get the direct hit here. But as it will be a larger hurricane, widespread area will see hazards. Stay safe, everyone. Be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.